So in this example, we will look at a example of a scalar function in ABAP, ABAP with CDS. So scalar functions were introduced since SAP ABAP on cloud version 2308 means 2023 August onwards. SAP got this concept. So what I want to do, what's my use case? Let's understand and then we'll see what is scalar function and how does it solve the use case. So I have got a CDS entity here, which is also selecting data from a table function to get the total sales of a company based on rank. It is joined with business partner data to give the region data. When I run the CDS entity, I get the company name, the total sales, the customer rank and the region in which the sales was made. My requirement is if the customer region is Asia Pacific Japan, yes, we are going to reduce the sales down by 10%. So in the total sales, we have to deduct 10% if the region is Asia Pacific Japan. So what I want, I want a new column for updated sales. This new column will be calculated based on every row, total sales and region. If the region is APJ, reduce it by 10%. If the region is other than APJ, keep the value as it is. Keep the value as it is. So what is, how do we going to calculate this? To be able to calculate this, we need a function. And this is certainly be a scalar function. Why? Because it will have two argument. First input will be sales. And second argument will be region. And based on that, for every record, we are going to calculate the updated sales. So this is my input. This is my output. And this calculation can be done with a simple scalar function for every row. So a scalar function will be invoked for every record evaluating our updated sales as a new column over here. To be able to achieve this, we will be using scalar function now. So what is that scalar function actually contains? Let's try and understand that in our presentation. So a scalar function is obviously a function, but why it's called scalar? Because it returns exactly one output. Now, what are the components, technical components of a scalar function? So first component is the scalar function definition, where you will define your input and output. What's my input? What's my output? The output will be only one value, which is point to a data type in above. And then you can have multiple inputs, but precisely only one output will be there. Then based on this, you will be implementing the scalar function in an AMDP class. So then you have a scalar function implementation. In the implementation, you are going to write all the SQL script logic which is basically written actually inside a AMDP class. That will be the implementation. So this is the definition, this is the implementation. So later on to invoke it, how do you invoke it? You will invoke it from any CDS entity by calling the scalar function. So you will define your CDS entity, curly basis. You have let's say column one, column two, and now you can call it by the function name. Parenthesis, your parameter value. So in our use case, we are going to pass parameter one, arrow symbol, column one value. Parameter two, arrow symbol, column two value. That's how we invoke it. And as a result, we are going to get a new column created at runtime, which contains our value. So in our use case, this, I will have two parameters. One will be the total sales and one will be the region. And based on the region, if the region is APJ, we are going to reduce the sales by 10%. Total sales by 10%. Else, we are just going to return as it is the same value. That will be my logic. I will write in implementation and this parameter definition I will write in the definition part. Fair enough. That's my requirement. So let's go one by one and step by step implement this requirement in our ADD. 
So I will come back right click on CDS new scalar function definition. We will provide the scalar function name, whatever name you would want to say. I say get updated sales. So calculate updated sales by region. Fair enough. Let's click on next. So it says SAP object cannot be assigned to package. So since it's a SAP object is as part of repository, it should start with Z or Y. So it says Z get updated sales. Perfect. Click on next. Finish. And now my scalar function definition is getting created. Wow. Now let's go ahead and define our parameters what we want to input. So my first parameter will be total sales, which is a numeric value. So you can put here numeric value. It's a predefined data type. You can also search adapt data type. So adapt dot control space. And here you can see all the available adapt data types. Wow. Nice. So I will put just numeric value. For me, it's a numeric value. And then I will also pass region, which is a character value. Okay, like, let's say pass to five characters. In the return data type, what is going to be the return value finally? So I'll say map dot, this will be perhaps a decimal float value of, let's say 30. So this is the definition part of our scalar function in, in the system. So as you all know, behind the scene, what it is going to do, it is going to go ahead and create a uh, database, a HANA database scalar function, which precisely, precisely return one value. Unlike a table function, which returns a table, a set of values, a set of rows and columns. So this is our scalar function definition. I activate this. My next step would be to go ahead and do the implementation for the same. So we can now right click and say, please create a scalar function implementation reference. Click on that. Let's give the name. So Z get updated sales. IMP implementation. So in HANA, which engine is this going to run? I'll say in SQL engine in HANA. Click on next. It says it implementation must be referenced with supported engine suffix. So we have to always put here, let's say, suffix as SQL. This is mandatory. You see, system itself is telling you what suffix you must have to add depending on the engine you choose. I click on next button. Finish. And this is my implementation reference where now I have to give my class name in which the code will be implemented. So this is again going to be a AMDP class, which we have to give the name. So I will provide an existing AMDP class, which we are using for implementing our business logic for all the AMDP. So let me go ahead and copy this AMDP class name and put that. Perfect. Enter. Save it. And now we are going to activate. So what we just did is created a definition for a scalar function and we created a implementation for implementation reference for a scalar function. In the next phase, we will start the implementation, actual code we are going to write in that class for the implementation. There is also a small change that the function name will be execute. E-X-E-C-U-P-E. So we just keep the class name and then we give the function name also. Execute as the name of the function which will execute my MDP. So that is very important otherwise it won't activate. So you have to give a function name also which will get called in the class. That is one small thing we need to add. So we are going to head over back to our MDP class and provide the function implementation and for that we'll create function definition now. So let's get back to our MDP class which we are coding since last session and here we are going to add our function definition for execute function as method 
execute is the name for the scalar function and the name of my scalar function is what let me grab that that's the name back and that was fantastic and then use the quick fix feature in ABAP development tool in Eclipse to add the implementation preference. And here we have to say for table, so for database function. Usually that's the syntax we use for any function. So by database function for HTTP language SQL script. So by database function for HTTP language SQL script, option read only. And inside this, we are going to write our logic. So what's my business logic? As I mentioned, for every region, if the region is um, APJ, then we are going to reduce the total sales by 10%. Else, we're going to keep it as it is. And that's going to be our result. So by default, that will be result parameter, which we are going to return out of our implementation. So we will just say if my SQL script logic, of course, and my input parameter name is region. If my region is equals to Asia Pacific Japan, APJ, then we are going to do what? We're going to reduce it by 10%. Yes, so my result is going to be my total sales input parameter. It's 90% value should be returned back because a discount of 10%, right? 0.9 else my result is going to be total sales perfect so that is the that is the logic business logic very simple one it is just to two input and one output always there will be one output and they should be matching the data type which we have added so let me activate this now and my implementation is truly complete by now for this scalar function in in SQL scripting. So it's the last step where we integrate it with our code. So I'm going to head over back to our CDS entity where we have the total sales and the region parameter. So it's time to calculate the new sales based on region and that's where we're going to integrate our scalar function. So what's the name? The name is get z get updated sales for that control space and we're going to pass here the parameters yes. so what are the parameters we have for our uh, our value so we have two parameters the parameter number one is total sales and second is region so let's pass that to our code in the entity region So we are going to pass this total sales over here and the region over here and this will produce to be a new column, a new column for updated sales. Saturations, that is how we integrate our content and of course this alias name needs to be also added to inform the system about the correct values. So that is how we are going to uh, give the data. Now it's saying column region is unknown because it's come from EPA. Everywhere, wherever we do, if we do mistake, we'll get to know that coming in uh, system. So uh, you can see when we, whenever we passing any currency value, yes. So in this case, this total sales is actually a currency for which there is a reference of currency code. So if you create a scalar function, which is passing the above CDS uh, currency value, then this type is not allowed. So in this case, you have to go and tweak your scalar function a little bit by putting the, changing the type instead of numeric with reference type. And I will say that this value will be of type either a currency E or it could be a unit. It could be a calculation, which I can perhaps pass so you can put the reference type basically. What is the reference data you are going to pass? Yeah. So we have to still say numeric, but 
it will be of type a currency key. Yeah, it will be refer there will be a reference of currency key for that as well. That is a small uh, update you need to do so that it can support the currency and quantities and units and calculated values in the system. So now we can come back, save it and try to activate our entity. It is still giving me an error. Let me just see how to fix that. So we can just come back and check. Total sales not supported. I think we have to not pass numeric there. We have to pass it as currency. Tap currency. And let me see you are at 5.7. It is actually currency type. Okay. And also, of course, we say with reference to currency. Activate that again. So it's just a data type issue which might arise for most of you. And now we are bulletproof with this scalar function. Let's activate that. So remember our business logic. Whenever it is uh, the Asia Pacific Japan, that is the time when uh, it is going to be less than 10%. Okay, again, there is another error. Parameter fixed length expected 15.7. Yeah. Yeah. It is expecting a length of 15.7, not the 172 which we passed. So let me pass it. see so basically the data size is length it is not expecting correctly just try to check so it's just a data type issue with the scalar function which we are trying to pass okay finally the data type matching happened and it worked and let's go back and execute our entity we are going to get the updated sales where you can see here now the actual updated sales and for Asia Pacific, the updated sales is less 10%. But for EMEA, it comes same. And of course, for other regions also same. So this is how we can build and integrate our scalar functions in a map with NetWeaver 7.57. And of course, S4 HANA version 2309 onwards, we have got you this new feature. Great. So 